Hello, my name is Sandra Hollingsworth. It is great pleasure to introduce Michelle Beck. Michelle Beck is the Vice President North America Sales at Talsat. She has over 30 years of experience in telecommunications and is an electrical engineer. Following her presentation, Michelle will be available to take questions. Please use your Zoom's chat function. Thank you. Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes, thank we can. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, I will kick off my presentation. Um, now I'm starting to share my screen. Can everyone see that presentation? Yes, yes. we can, Michelle. Okay, yep. thank you. Thank you for the feedback. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you very much for uh, hosting uh, us uh, today. We are actually thrilled uh, to talk about the Telesat Lightspeed service. Um, its objective is to provide uh, affordable high-speed connectivity everywhere, um, everywhere across Canada, uh, everywhere around the world. Uh, we started this project um, several years ago, and um, it is um, uh, it is slated uh, to be uh, in service in a couple of years. Um, so before we get started, uh, I would just like to provide uh, some uh, background on Telesat. Uh, we are leading uh, global satellite operator. We're headquartered here in Ottawa. Uh, we were created by an act of parliament over 50 years ago um, with the mandate of providing connectivity uh, from coast to coast to coast uh, across Canada. Um, we uh, launch services carrying uh, CBC, English and French networks, distributing video to um, every community across Canada, um, as well as providing uh, telephony services as well and driving connectivity into the most rural and remote parts of Canada. Um, we have uh, 50 years plus of innovation uh, under our belt, um, and uh, I'll highlight one of the sort of later uh, well-known is in 2004, we launched our ANIC F2 uh, satellite. We were the first in the world to offer a consumer direct uh, to user KA band broadband satellite. It's become the norm with many companies now relying on that. We were the first in the world to do so. Um, lately, uh, we launched uh, a LEO phase one test satellite. We were the first in the world to actually test 5G wireless services over a LEO uh, satellite and constellation with very good results. We have um, many, many more notables um, in terms of innovation uh, that I can speak to, but those are a couple of the uh, latest highlights. Uh, we are a global and diverse um, uh, customer base. We offer broadcasting services. Essentially, 50% of our revenues come from direct-to-home broadcast services. The other uh, approximately 50% come from enterprise, uh, where we supply trunking services to carriers that offer connectivity, not just here in Canada, but globally. Um, as part of uh, the services that we provide, we have a niche consulting uh, operations, and we provide con consultation services to administrations around the world on the development of satellite programs. We are um, the uh, one of the most uh, prominent uh, satellite consultation firms uh, in the world. Um, 
There is um, a rising demand for secure, flexible fiber quality connectivity uh, everywhere. Um, nearly half of the world's population uh, in key markets lack high speed uh, internet. Um, we have a focus uh, domestically in Canada to bridge, you know, that connectivity gap, but we're also um, looking uh, globally uh, to do that through our Telesat Lightspeed service. Um, as you can see, the demand for IP connectivity is growing um, at um, a very, um, uh, a very uh, significant pace. And by 2023, uh, you know, 396 uh, uh, exabytes uh, per month will be uh, consumed. Uh, and, and that uh, is uh, part of the demand uh, for that. We want to, uh, we want to um, satisfy that through our Telesat uh, Lightspeed constellation. We'll meet part of that demand. 12% uh, of Ontario's population lacks high-speed uh, internet. So 70%, a little over 70% of rural communities today do not have access to a 50 by 10, which is the basic service objective that's been established by the government in the CRTC. 84% of First Nation reserve areas uh, don't have access to 50 by 10 today. Uh, 30, uh, a little over 37% uh, percent are not covered by LTE, which is uh, a wireless uh, service. And 9% of roads and highways across Ontario do not have LTE or wireless coverage. Um, these are key uh, metrics and we plan on bridging that with our light speed service. Uh, so light speed is, um, is an, a program, it's an infrastructure uh, that can provide uh, gigabit per second links, so high speed connectivity. It will be low latency um, in the th uh, sub 50 millisecond um, range. Uh, it'll be uh, consistent with a fiber uh, connectivity, so very low latency, high quality. Uh, high capacity. So it's not just high speed gigabit per second links, but we can deliver high capacity. So we can satisfy the demands in communities. Um, and we're not just delivering uh, service at just 100 megabit per second. We can connect uh, communities with gigabits and tens of gigabits worth of connectivity as required. And that can grow as the demand in those communities grow. Um, there isn't any point on earth that we will not be able to provide service. So the Telesat Lightspeed's constellation is inherently global and it serves every point on earth over every water mass ocean um, it does uh, it offers service um, in in the north pole in the south pole again there's not a place on earth that we cannot provide uh, connectivity it's highly reliable. Um, the constellation is distributed around the globe um, and we've got 300 satellites that provide that level of connectivity. So there's uh, built-in redundancy uh, in terms of the constellation um, as well as built-in redundancy on the ground. Um, and we'll go through that uh, in a couple of um, uh, slides. Um, as the uh, as the um, as the presentation progresses, ease of use, um, quick service deployments. So we can connect a community relatively quickly by uh, delivering and installing the satellite terminal. That will then connect to the local access network uh, that exists in in the communities, and we will provide uh, that backhaul. Uh, connectivity to the internet in the south. Uh, we'll provide that trunking service. And then it's cost effective. Um, again, transformational economics and very efficient use. The constellation is built uh, to support global connectivity. And so um, we're not just building a single fiber uh, that will connect a community and that community has to pay for that fiber connectivity. Uh, the global demand pays for the overall infrastructure um, and that constellation. Uh, and the community just gets a small share of that. 
So the goal here is to deliver low latency. This is critical to offer uh, quality service um, and quality networks. Uh, the Leo constellation does that because it operates much closer to uh, Earth. Um, it flies, our satellites fly at about a thousand kilometers. That's 35 times closer to the Earth than traditional geo satellites. And that uh, typically is what has been available uh, to date. Um, so the quality of the service certainly um, is going to be a lot higher over a Leo constellation. Uh, so the attributes of our Telesat uh, light speed service, it consists of 300 highly advanced satellites that are flying at about a thousand kilometers away from the Earth. Um, it will enable affordable, low latency, very high speed connectivity. Um, we'll be able to target and offer 50 by 10 unlimited across all of Canada um, with the ability to scale uh, into the communities. And we can provide gigabit uh, per second, even for institutions located in these remote communities where it's required. Um, if there's hospital, government offices, uh, businesses, mining camps, we'll be able to provide uh, even higher uh, levels of connectivity to serve those communities. Um, the nice thing about uh, what we do is we connect communities. We provide that backhaul trunk. So we provide very affordable com uh, competitive connectivity. The, um, so we're not just com uh, connecting households. We can connect wireless towers in these, in these communities so that you're getting fixed wireless access to serve households, businesses, institutions, we also connect that wireless tower and you can get LTE and 5G services across the entire community. That can be extended to some of the roadways as well so that you can connect the highways in and out of these communities. Um, Telesat Lightspeed is the world's most advanced state-of-the-art LEO constellation ever built. We have uh, ensured that uh, we have um, made use of the most advanced technologies on these satellites. Uh, we don't need to operate with tens of thousands of satellites to connect globally. We start off with 300 satellites and we can provide some of the most advanced connectivity uh, possible. So it's a very efficient means of connecting um, communities. Uh, we plan on launching the service in approximately two years, um, starting at the end of 2023. Uh, Telesat Lightspeed is the largest space program ever conceived here in Canada, and we are investing um, uh, the, towards the development of our constellation, um, taking part with supply chain in the Canadian uh, markets, and we're deploying infrastructure. Um, Telesat headquarters is located in Ontario. We are creating jobs in Ontario as part of our program, as well as elsewhere across Canada. Um, the, cover, the Government of Canada believes in our program. Um, in fact, they've invested $685 million uh, to date to help bridge the digital divide in northern parts of Canada. Um, so I'll speak to that program uh, in a couple of slides here. Um, the nice thing is MIT. The, Mass uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology has actually endorsed uh, the Telesat light speed service. They conducted an independent study in 2018 uh, and have updated that study in January of 2021. Uh, they've analyzed our constellation, um, how we plan on operating it and our technology. And they've concluded that our system outperforms uh, our competition. And our competition consists of um, OneWeb as well as SpaceX in the provision of connectivity services um, across or, or uh, around the globe. Um, so that was a very strong endorsement from uh, MIT. 
Uh, so um, many parts of Ontario lack uh, broadband connectivity today. We plan on um, helping to bridge uh, that digital divide. Um, so approximately 300,000 uh, uh, households uh, still need uh, connectivity. Uh, many of these households are located in uh, smaller uh, rural and remote communities. Um, and one of the biggest challenges is that backhaul connection uh, to the community. Uh, it's either non-existent, uh, it's very low uh, bandwidth, um, and or uh, it um, is very costly. So we believe uh, that Telesat Lightspeed can connect uh, the communities. Uh, connecting all of Ontario can only be done, however, and we recognize that by uh, leveraging various uh, backhaul technologies as well as local access technologies. So um, in communities that are very close to the urban centers, we recognize fiber uh, is probably more economical to connect those communities. Um, uh, Telesat uh, Leo or Lightspeed um, is ideal to connect uh, rural and remote communities uh, that uh, whereby fiber is is a challenge or uneconomic to deploy. Um, and we support uh, definitely a combination of of uh, various technologies. Again, Telesat Lightspeed, the nice thing about it is rapid service, um, uh, rap rapid implementation of this service. Again, uh, what's required is uh, delivery of a light speed terminal, installing it and connecting it to uh, the network. That's done uh, very uh, efficiently and quickly, um, and we use standardized technologies, um, Ethernet. So it's not unlike connecting um, uh, fiber uh, at the end of the, that network. Um, we leverage a community aggregator model to uh, provide affordable uh, connectivity uh, to the communities. So um, again, the uh, connectivity uh, it takes place at a POP, and the POP is located in a major urban center uh, where a um, uh, number of uh, ISPs, internet service providers, uh, provide connectivity. Um, the, um, that ISP uh, then connects to uh, the LEO constellation. The signals come down at the remote terminal and the local access network, which is called the last mile, connects enterprise schools, hospitals, the community at large, households, as well as the LTE 5G connectivity. Um, it's all ethernet based. Now, the, cover, the Government of Canada has endorsed uh, uh, Telesat Lightspeed. Uh, they've uh, provided uh, for a $600 million uh, partnership with Telesat to bring affordable high-speed connectivity and wireless connectivity to rural and northern parts of Canada. Um, with that, we can deliver affordable access. We can support a 50 by 10 megabit per second unlimited um, uh, connectivity to households and connect uh, via 5G LTE services. Um, we will be working with local ISPs, with communities that want to provide their own ISP services uh, to connect uh, the communities. Um, and we're certainly prepared to do so. Uh, we have um, certainly a lot of experience working today with ISPs to connect northern communities um, across the territories, as well as many uh, First Nations and Indigenous communities in the, the northern parts of the province today using our geostationary satellites. Um, and we're certainly looking forward to connecting uh, these same communities and expanding our footprint with our LEO constellation. Um, we've also been working with um, other parties in Ontario. Um, one of them is the uh, Halton uh, Peel Regional Police um, as part of the Public Safety Broadband Network. Uh, in fact, they have conducted trials 
over our uh, LEO phase one satellite um, using their uh, PSBN LTE network, uh, again, with great success. And we look forward to working with them uh, in the future as well. So Telesat, again, with our long 50-year history in, um, in providing satellite connectivity, uh, the deep working relationships that we have with our customers, um, the vast experience that we have operating in Canada and the North um, across all four seasons, um, providing uh, direct operating and maintenance support to our customer base. Um, we're in a strong financial position, having operated satellites and uh, satellite networks and services for customers. Uh, we have global re regulatory experience. Uh, we have priority ITU rights to the spectrum that we need to uh, launch and operate our uh, our constellation. Um, and in fact, uh, we hold those priority rights. Other um, LEO operators and competitors do need to coordinate with us because we hold uh, those priority spectrum rights. And again, we have the strong support from the government of Canada with respect of our, our service. Um, and um, and uh, there's certainly, um, uh, the the um, the recognition that Telesat will help uh, to bridge the digital divide across Canada and uh, hopefully across uh, northern parts of Ontario. So that is uh, the presentation in a nutshell. I'm happy uh, now to take uh, questions. Thanks, Michelle. We've had uh, a, a couple of questions come in. One is, uh, how can the Government of Canada help accelerate TELSAT's LEO schedule? Ah, so uh, we are actually currently working with, uh, again, the Government of Canada. They've uh, provided great support to date. Uh, we're hoping that they will continue to support, uh, uh, to support us uh, down uh, down the road. Um, so first and foremost, uh, we uh, received uh, some monies to help uh, with the development of our constellation in the form of R and D um, in in the form of R and D support. Uh, so for every dollar uh, that we spend, uh, they will put in approximately thirty uh, cents, um, and that's for the first two hundred and forty million dollars uh, spent as part of the development of our, our Leo constellation. Um, the other area that they that they've certainly helped us is the $600 million commitment that they've made uh, for uh, the, um, the light speed capacity to help bridge uh, connectivity in the rural and remote areas. That has helped uh, with our lenders um, and the fact that uh, they've committed uh, that amount um, and that goes to a pool of capacity that will be allocated uh, to provide service to the communities. Um, we are uh, in discussions with the government of Canada, as well as um, Export uh, Development Credit Agency uh, in uh, for follow-on funding uh, to uh, help secure some of the last remaining uh, dollars that we need um, just uh, to finish off the funding as part of our constellation. Uh, so that's certainly one way uh, to help us and to help accelerate uh, the deployment of the LEO uh, service in Canada. Thank you for that, Michelle. The next one, uh, the next question, what does a community need to do now in order to be ready for the 2023 availability of light speed backhaul? Our local ISPs have very limited resources to assist rural areas with this last mile. Ah, um, so um, 
so the, so the one advantage about the community aggregation model um, is that uh, there is a local access network that exists within these communities. We feel that, um, and many believe that that provides uh, certainly a better quality of uh, service and uh, allows uh, for certainly a more uh, flexible offering uh, across the community. Uh, so providing connectivity to households, uh, businesses uh, with connectivity that can scale and connectivity to uh, the wireless towers. Um, so um, there's there's certain things that um, uh, that we are doing uh, today. We're working with ISPs. Um, we're actually uh, providing interim services using our geo constellation to help bridge that backhaul connectivity, uh, so that we can offer um, a service uh, in the interim. Uh, we work with the communities and or the ISP uh, to help them secure funding through various programs and that's through either uh, federal programs such as the Universal Broadband Fund and the Universal Broadband Fund um, is a program uh, that uh, does assist in funding and uh, facilitates the deployment of local access infrastructure as well as the backhaul infrastructure to deploy. Um, the government of Ontario has just announced two and a half, uh, a little over than uh, more than two and a half billion, I think $2.8 billion um, all to, uh, to go towards uh, broadband uh, deployments. Um, and likewise, uh, we believe uh, those programs will help in the deployment of the local access, but also uh, some of the uh, backhaul connectivity uh, to connect these communities. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I have a couple more questions for you. Uh, 5010 is now an outdated minimum for today's needs. Will you be able to uh, to suffice for the future? Will you uh, will you be able to meet the needs in the future? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so uh, the Telesat constellation starts off um, in its nominal configuration with three hundred satellites. Um, we uh, have uh, filed uh, to grow that constellation uh, to about uh, a little over sixteen hundred satellites. Um, we, uh, we scale uh, the service as the demand within the community scales. So today, uh, the basic service objective um, and the measurement is 50 uh, by 10 minimum per household with unlimited connectivity. Um, that can be the starting point to connect uh, communities, um, but we can scale up at any time as the demand within those communities scale. And how we do that, uh, twofold. Um, so the terminal uh, resides within the community and we can uh, just continue to add co uh, capacity to deliver to that community through those terminals. Uh, if we exceed the limit on the capability of that terminal, we just add a second set of terminals and then you can double up the capacity that lands within that community and you can continue to grow that as the demand grows. Um, again, the flexibility of the LEO constellation um, allows us to focus uh, huge, significant amounts of community or connect um, capacity where the demand exists. We have a lot of flexibility within our constellation. We make use of uh, steerable beams and onboard processing and optical inter-satellite links. Um, these are all advanced te uh, technologies uh, that we've embedded as part of our uh, solution and uh, it allows us to really focus capacity into the communities where the demand uh, exists and we can grow um, into the future and meet all future uh, requirements. Uh, there, there is no issue there. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, the next uh, question, actually, there were several of these questions came along, so I've kind of bundled them together. 
Uh, you've talked um, uh, during your presentation about costs uh, to the to the users. Um, uh, do you have an idea what the annual cost is going to be moving forward? Is it going to increase ex uh, by a bit, or is it going to remain the same, or is it actually going to decrease the, as you put more satellites in orbit? So uh, the the cost to uh, communities, rural and remote communities, uh, today is um, a a fixed uh, cost per megabit. That's for the the backhaul trunk uh, into the community, um, and that's what feeds basically the ISP services to the community. Um, the government of Canada, like I said, has committed a, a very significant, a large amount of capacity to provide connectivity to these communities. Um, and it's a fixed cost over a 10 year period. They've committed this capacity for 10 years. Um, and uh, as we grow the constellation, as the demand uh as the demand uh, grows around the world, um, as we even consider probably the next generation of connectivity, we do see uh, the cost of connectivity uh, reducing, um, certainly not getting uh, uh, more expensive as, uh, as time goes on. Okay, uh, the next one uh, deals with um, Starlink and uh, the fact that Starlink is now in beta testing in, uh, in, uh, in Canada. And they're, they're just wondering what your business model is uh, in two years if Starlink uh, uh, continues to expand past its beta test. Yes, so, um, so the difference between Starlink and uh, the Telesat Lightspeed services, Starlink is focused on providing uh, connectivity and services to directly to uh, the end user. So their model is they put a small dish on every rooftop um, or beside every household and provide internet services that way. Um, our model is to work with carriers, to work with ISPs, to work with um, municipal or community-based ISPs to connect communities. Uh, so we're more of a B2B, business-to-business -business, um, uh, model where we provide uh, literally, it's a carrier-grade service. We provide um, a very high-quality service uh, it's at a committed information uh, data rate to connect these communities. So we don't contend the service. We don't share that backhaul. It's like you were uh, connecting the community with fiber, except it's a wireless satellite link. Um, so there's guaranteed quality of service and guaranteed availability um, at, that, uh, at that point. So I would say that's uh, one of the key differences. Um, the Starlink model works very well for individual households that are uh, in very rural areas that have no density. Uh, we believe the best and the most uh, cost if, uh, effective model uh, to serve communities is to build out a local access network um, and to drive that efficiency within uh, the uh, local community where uh, some of that local content can remain uh, local. Um, you know, if the ISP is managing that infrastructure, you can permit voice over IP calls, uh, you can permit uh, the connectivity, you can uh, do some caching services within the community, you can connect the wireless tower. That's something that you can't do with a Starlink service. Um, so there, there's a different, uh, different approach and a different model. Um, we believe uh, globally that there's sufficient demand uh, for one, two, or even three LEO operators uh, to be successful. There's so much demand globally uh, that we don't believe uh, it will uh, impact overall our uh, business model and our service and our success long-term. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is um, internet and cell costs in other countries 
uh, advertise at a lower, a lot lower cost than we see in uh, Canada's monthly charges. Is there a reason for that? That might not be specific to Starlink, but uh, yeah. you're an expert. So we would, uh, uh, we'd all probably wanna know why our bills are higher here than other countries. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, so uh, I, I would uh, say that um, uh, there's probably a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, uh, there are, um, you know, three uh, key uh, service providers of uh, wireless services in the market, whereas many of the other uh, markets have a greater number of um, of competitors. Uh, competition uh, certainly does uh, drive innovation as well as uh, lower prices. Um, the other thing uh, that I would say is, um, you know, auctions uh, will uh, drive uh, the uh, price points up uh, for uh, services and price points. So the higher the bidding, um, you know, the higher the uh, infrastructure cost to deploy wireless services is, which will drive uh, in the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, higher price points. Um, the other thing uh, that I would say, um, and notable, I think, you know, our wireless carriers do offer a very good quality of service, um, but that costs money as well. Uh, you know, often when you travel uh, across the U.S., I've experienced it where even in some of the major urban centers, you lack connectivity uh, that typically will not ever happen here in Canada. So I would say three factors, uh, competition, um, you know, high costs of spectrum as an underlying um, as an underlying cost, as well as just the uh, good quality of service, which also drives um, higher price points. Uh, the next one is actually from uh, an, an international viewer of the, of the conference. Is the um, ha, has SpaceX or sorry, St uh, St uh, Telsat ever considered using the Indian Space Research Organization for launches of its satellites? Um. So we launched our phase one uh, satellite on uh, an Indian uh, launcher. Um, we had, in fact, two. It was our first uh, satellite. Uh, so we had, uh, let, me, let me take a step back. We had two LEO phase one satellites that we had built. Uh, we built them uh, with two different manufacturers, and we uh, secured launches with two separate launch companies. The first satellite that we launched, uh, the uh, launch was a failure, and it blew up uh, shortly after launch. The second one, uh, which was a successful launch, was launched on uh, an Indian launcher. Um, it was um, it was highly successful. We are looking at a variety of launch companies to launch our constellation. We have a couple of uh, committed contracts to date, but we are still working on uh, establishing uh, diversity in our launch capability. Um, so uh, we haven't announced all of our suppliers yet. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. Um, and then uh, maybe the last question, folks are often concerned with the health implications of 5G emissions. How does this factor into the type of, of your system? And does this still exist as a potential concern for citizens? Um, so the, the one thing that I would say is um, the uh, satellites operate at very, very uh, low emission levels. Um, that's uh, the one thing that I would say. Uh, so it poses um, very little to absolutely no risk um, to the health of, uh, of uh, people that are uh, close or nearby. Uh, that being said, uh, there are uh, safety standards that do take place around uh, the terminals. Um, and uh, they either need to be uh, elevated off the ground so that people just don't walk uh, by uh, the uh, 
the, the satellite terminals. Uh, with respect to 5G and 5G uh, emissions, um, uh, I don't, um, I haven't followed it that closely. Um, I don't believe uh, that um, the emissions associated with uh, the 5G uh, poses uh, any health risks. Um, and I, I, I mean, that's what I would say. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, there's been a lot of um, late studies with 5G emissions lately because we're just starting to uh, deploy uh, that technology. Well, thank you, Michelle. Um, this concludes uh, uh, your, your presentation. Um, would you like to make any uh, final comments? Um, well, I would like to uh, thank you very much uh, for your time today. Um, and what I would say is that uh, as a Canadian company, we're certainly here to uh, support uh, connecting uh, many of the rural and remote uh, Canadians. We've certainly uh, established this as one of our objectives to help bridge the digital divide uh, in Canada. We've been doing it for uh, over 50 years and uh, we're looking forward to uh, helping to connect uh, those rural and remote areas that uh, still need great, uh, great connectivity uh, going forward. And we'll do that using our Leo Lightspeed service. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Like everyone else, I found your presentation very informative. And I have to admit, I was eager to be part of your introduction. And I just want to say I look forward to Telsat working with his partners to better connect us to the world, especially here in Northern Ontario.